Russian invasion of Ukraine remains one topic in the international scene that has kept a lot of people wondering uh, if we ever expected to have such an experience in the year 2022, um, <laughs> where many people had really given it uh, a close, you know, sermon after the Second World War. But that's where we are today. Russia says it's a special military operation has yet is yet to declare a total war in Ukraine. I want you to take a look at the level of <laughs> destruction across uh, Ukraine. You would ask, what could be worse than this? How, how else would anyone describe this? Now, many nationals were caught up in this, not only Ukrainians, Nigerians not exempted. And on Silver Bear Television, we've made it a point of duty to keep in touch uh, with uh, Nigerians who've been displaced, especially the students and all those who are still within Ukraine. Uh, who need help or want to just uh, let people, the world know what's going on, uh, the true situation, let's first I report. Someone's been keeping it happen there for us uh, within Nigeria to the UK and of course Ukraine and back into the country at this point in time. Blessed Umobasa, so nice to have you on News Hub today. All right, blessing. All right, blessing, so nice to have you. <laughs> You have to unmute your device so that we can hear you talk on the program uh, this morning. Uh, many students have cried out for help from across uh, Europe, those very uh, close to uh, Ukraine, those who don't have the means of getting back into the country or even continue with your education because according to them, uh, the parents had expended all they had, some obtained loans to send them to school. And so starting all over again for all of them, so for many of them, is something that they've found very, very tasking. Uh, Blessing will get with us in just a moment, get back to us so that we can hear what she has to say. Uh, well, I, I remember the start of this, my daughter's friend also was part of those students that were held in uh, Sumi before uh, Blessing stepped in and also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other stakeholders were able to really step into the situation and the students were, uh, you know, you know, helped through the border area to other states. Uh, I don't know what your take would be on how far the students are faring. Absolutely, and something for us to think about, and um, the implications have been grave. You know, a lot of people have uh, been stranded, and uh, it's a moving story. And every day we get to hear the tragic. Uh, the, I, when the hostilities are done and the stories unravel of what have happened, we'll be shocked to our bone marrows of the atrocities that have happened to everyday people. Could have been you, could have been anyone, uh, you know. So there we have a uh, blessing. Imobusa, who has joined us now. It's a blessing. Great to have you join us on uh, News Hub this morning. Hi, good morning. Excellent. That's uh, good to be here. Brilliant, brilliant blessing. And we have um, uh, Dr. Amara Chimojek who also joined the conversation this morning, uh, medical doctor. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mojek, for joining us on News Hub. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, a Ukrainian citizen also joined the conversation. He's currently in Luzgorod. We have uh, Vladimir Nikolenko. Thank you very much, Vladimir, for joining us. Good morning, everyone. God bless you guys. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we'll, we'll begin with you, since you were in Ukraine there together with um, Dr. Mojeku also too. Let's uh, hear what your story has been like. Um, we every day have had the horror that everyday citizens in Ukraine have had to go through. And um, tell us what is happening. We hear you have a, a story saying you're waiting to go to war in the army also too. It means that you're in the reserve or you're waiting uh, to join in on the list. Please go ahead, Vladimir. All right, looks like we have um, some disconnection with him there. Vladimir, are you there? If you're there, please go ahead. Uh, let's hear what your story is. All right, uh, it, it looks like we have some connection issues with Vladimir, but we'll get to him. Dr. Project, if you can hear me, uh, please let's hear what you have to say also too. Um, you have a story which we've been also f been following for quite a while. Uh, which is um, the way you've had to help people who have been stranded 
uh, within the crisis. And it's such a, it's such a moving story also too we had from you uh, uh, previously too. Uh, talk to us again, um, any updates, what is happening with you in Ukraine? Yes, yes. So um, at the moment, um, I think like was it a night ago, there was a um, bomb blast in a very ne a neighboring city. And it's really a very tough time right now in Ukraine. And it seems like the rest of the world is moving on with their lives. But, you know, it's a tough time. Um, we have a lot of people who are displaced. We have a lot of people who don't know where to go, what to do. Um, yesterday, I was speaking to a man who served in the Soviet Union for 30 years. And he's right now 75 years old and he's currently displaced from his home and he has nowhere to go. Um, most of the people in Ukraine are coming down to the um, to the borders, um, to the cities close to the borders so that if everything goes really bad, they will just have to quickly leave. And so it's really a tough time. Um, throughout this week, we were in a situation where we had to evacuate people from very dangerous areas and it's just been, it's just been tough and, you know, um, and you know, the more we think it's going to end, the more we are just hearing different things. Um, even like the Russian Russians mobilizing more military people, and it's just a very difficult time in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, personally, I'm just evacuating people, getting them to safety, giving them places to stay, feeding them, taking care of children. And I'm, I'm, it's just sad that children are caught up in this situation, but there are a lot of kids who are stranded, some who have lost their parents, and we are doing everything possible to make sure that they are okay and they are taken care of. And about also the vulnerable, you know, the people, the old people, for example, who have to be on prescription medications and they are running out of uh, of the chemists and you know we don't have the medications they need and then we have uh, issues also of diesel we don't have you know diesels in the filling station and people are just stuck in different places and they are vulnerable and you know just pushing as much as i can to help help them and see that everybody is okay and everybody's surviving the war it's really tough but i mean just uh it's just, uh, I mean, the fact that you're able to still stay safe is something that's very heartwarming. And as we also always would advise, please continue to stay safe as you do good. Uh, we'll get back to you in just a moment. Let's see if we have Vladimir back before we go to bless him. Vladimir, if, if you can hear us. All right. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, we've heard, we, 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 the whole world uh, is uh, watching what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, I mean, from Mariupol to what's happening in Kiev to Sumy uh, to uh, every other part. You presently are in a used garage. What's the situation like there at this point in time? The time, like all the time, is a bombing, bombing, they bombing, then a bombing night. All the time, it's going bomb to Ukraine from. A site of occupied Russia from Belarusia, they sent bombs to the then and night. A lot of people died every day, and they just put people not uh, normally funeral. They just like uh, take it a little bit, uh, just like, a little bit uh, ground and put them in, like for one meter, for half meter in uh, land. But the Russian Russian soldiers, dead soldiers, they don't, don't take it back to Russia, they just put in a special cars and born body, and they don't want to take it, uh, bodies back to Russia. It's a lot of bodies, you know, like, just on the street. And, and this, this, this must be very depressing for you, uh, Vladimir. I mean, this is a city you knew in peace times, and to see everything change all of a sudden. How have you been able to get on with your everyday life, or have you had to live in this sort of situation? Uh, together with uh, family and neighbors waiting for w when the next uh, bomb will go off. Uh, last night it's um, been bombing the city of Lviv and alarm and everybody uh, try to hide in uh, underground, you know, it's like uh, it's very in English, uh, everybody hiding when it start alarm, it's uh, like half Ukraine last night, uh, everybody have alarm in cities and they bombing uh, Lviv a lot of things. I'm a blessing. We have just. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
All right, Vladimir. We have we still have a couple of more questions for you uh, before the end of this segment today. Blessing, let's come to you. Uh, what's the update on the situation, the students uh, that you've been uh, looking out for? What, what are the updates we have from them? Um, well, it's still um, <clears throat> still the same um, challenges they've been facing. Um, like we know, this month was. Um, one of the ones where they give them a deadline to move out to certain areas of Europe. So um, the students have been finding it very difficult. And it also comes to the reflection of what is happening even in Nigeria. Um, <clears throat> where we think um, having to have conflict and fight is uh, something that will not have basic um, great repercussion. And so uh, most of the students, um, we have students who are in Finland, we had them. Um, how Putin has been cut off the electricity from Finland. So we have students who are there who are trying to move out from there to other borders. And um, most of the other European countries around Ukraine don't feel safe at this time. And so most of the students are also looking for options to make sure they are in countries where they feel safer. And I'd like to, um, uh, Vladimir said, um, I guess you might not have heard him clearly, uh, there has been constant bombing in Ukraine, constant uh, most people are in the borders and uh, the borders are choked up and the borders are crowded with people. And um, the Russian government are not, are not taking their dead bodies of their soldiers back. So they're burning them in a, like a tanker where they burn the bodies. And news got to us where um, the Russian government are also uh, paying their soldiers three to three thousand to five thousand dollars per month and so of course uh, these are people who basically um would get six hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a month and they are giving three to five thousand dollars of course they'll go to war to fight and um, the war is hotter than before um, i guess the western world are trying to create a subtle environment for the world not to go into chaos and um, most of the nigerian students we're trying our best to take them to uh, further european countries that are not as close to close to the borders as much as we can and have alternatives for them. And we're still going around trying to plead to state government to see how they could help with finances. And, and there's something um, uh, Dr. Mojeku talked about. Uh, it looks like people have moved on. And this is not just something that happened, has happened with Ukraine. We've seen this happen oftentimes with conflict. In the beginning, there's a rush of uh, everyone to try to get everyone out of harm's way and then the, the uh, people begin to uh, throw in the money to help in the humanitarian efforts. But it appears it's drying up, and attention also to is fading away very quickly too for quite a number of nations, not just uh, the African nations. Well, what, what are your thoughts in, from your experience uh, so far, uh, Blessing? Um, the thing is, uh, remember the media had so much power to pass in information. And it's the information that passed on to people that people will be aware of what is going on. Um, the world has moved on. A lot of people thinking the war is over and thinking everything is all right. In fact, in Nigeria, when you reach out to so many people, they act like, oh, nothing is going wrong, or oh, the children are being taken care of. That's not true. The war just started. This is just the beginning of the war. And I think if um, Africans in particular and Nigerians and the politicians who are running for um, different positions pay attention to what is happening, this is a time where revolution is coming. This is a time where you have to restructure and make right decision. And this is a time where Nigerians and the citizens have to make right decision of who they will, become, who they will make presidents of Nigeria because the... China is going. Uh, China is about to go on war. They are testing missiles. You have Europe having to fight with Russia. You have America saying, "Oh, um, Russia cannot do what they are doing to their citizen." And so, for example, if the war escalates more than it is now, where's the next place where people are going to be running to? Of course, it's Africa. Africa is the next hub where people are going to be finding safety, where people are going to be coming to. And so that's why it's very important that every. Um, uh, politician or every person who is working for a position should build 
their own states, to build their own country, Africa in particular, should come together and to be united more than ever before. We do not have time for people fighting about petty things like religion and doing certain things that we do not matter where there's a real situation at hand that in the next five years we are looking we're looking at uh world war three whether we like it or not it might only take time but the ability for us to build our own nation and ability for us to create unity and um improving our infrastructures improving our educational uh, facilities and educational structure it will help us save as much people as possible and these students we are complaining about going to other countries to study they'll be comfortable enough to come back home and say we have a place that will give us all that we need and if possible those who are by then will have graduated will be able to come back home and give back to us in nigeria and give back to the society the necessary knowledge needed to move our country forward or to move our people to the next level in life so much as, as i will always say thanks for the good that you do um amarachi what is the present humanitarian situation uh in kiev where you are at this point in time especially when it has to do with nigerians you're in touch with and those are other people whom you've been in touch with since the beginning of the invasion so um, currently in a city called uh, Mukache, uh, because I travel back and forth because of the nature of the things that I do. Um, so at the moment, there are a lot of Nigerians actually who are quite displaced because um, the truth is that not everybody is willing to take that leap, you know, that leap of faith to just leave the country and and travel to other places because some of them are not even documented and they don't know what their faith is going to be. They don't know where they're going to go. They don't know whether they'll be accepted in Europe. And most people don't want to go back home. And also because of the situation of things currently in Nigeria, you know, where there's a lot of fighting, you know, and, you know, just instability in the country is really affecting a lot of things. And so people like, I just prefer to be here and, you know, just see how they can. And it, it's quite unfortunate because, you know, just to think about it, that someone would be willing to re re risk their lives um, and be here just to be in a place. Um, that's really unfortunate, but that's, that's what we are experiencing. And so some of them do not have houses to stay in. They don't have food to eat because there's no job, of course. The country is in chaos and it's work. And so what, what we are doing is just trying everything possible to make sure that um, that they are stable, make sure that we can see how we can help and support, you know. I have a couple of friends um, who are Ukrainians who have fled the country and their houses are empty. So what I do is um, I speak to them wherever they are in Europe, some of them are in Poland at the moment, some of them are in the UK, and I ask them to please send me the keys to their homes so that I can, you know, you know, send those kids to, to people who are displaced so they can take over their homes and live there for a while see things are in order and yeah so that's just the situation of things it's quite unfortunate but it's really really a very trying time um two days ago i saw a father in the dustbin picking up milk for his children and i i just started crying he was sad to see that and by god's grace we're able to come to their aid and you know provide some milk for the kids and all of that but it's really difficult um for nigerians it's of course it's not their home and so it's also more difficult and especially when you're not documented um, you don't want to show your face you don't want to ask for help you don't want to just you know i mean it takes people who are really really interested in you to come and say hey i see you're hurting i see you're crying i see your pain how can i support you what can i do for you what how what do you need whether it is mental health care whether it is financial care whether it is place to live um how can i support you uh, because whether you're documented or not, it doesn't matter to me. You're a human being, and everybody should have a right to live and 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 be well. Um, that's the way that I look at it. And everyone, everyone should be able to get humanitarian care, um, you know, whatever capacity that is available. And it doesn't matter the situation or your stay in the country. What you know that looks like, document documentation wise. So yeah, this is um, how it's going now. All right, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mojeku. Let's speak uh, with Vladimir. Vladimir, th this has been called the largest human exodus in recent times. Uh, millions of people have fled Ukraine because of uh, this crisis. So I'm asking you, when, when, when do you intend to leave, or do you intend to sit back and wait until the Russians come? Uh, what, what's your plan? 
very good in this game because I don't understand you. My English not 100%. Right. Can I explain that to him, if you don't mind? Right, Vladimir. So I was asking you whether you plan to leave Ukraine or to stay back and not knowing the Russians might come in at any point in time. Of course, I uh, planning to stay in Ukraine and protect Ukraine. Everybody now, man, we talking. We won't protect Ukraine, but I stayed in line and went to join army. But they told me just waiting because first going in army, uh, people who is already been in army in war. Uh, before I don't been in army, you know, and they just put me in line. I am waiting. Of course, I won't go just to protect Ukraine, but I cannot uh, right now. I'm doing volunteer and help to people because people from all Ukraine they come here because uh, many cities bombing and people try run to border and be. Uh, close to border, uh, in safety place, more safety place for the middle Ukraine or East Ukraine. And uh, here everybody ask help, uh, money for food, place to live. And we like try help everyone. We cannot just uh, here like all Ukraine come here to border and ask everyone ask me every day help me help me buy for me food. I just come in shop and he ask me buy me this buy me this. And we try to help to everybody. We just not um, like going around. We just Help, try to help everyone, man or woman, who ask help for food or for a place to stay. I just, uh, people come and they don't know what to do. I, um, and of course, uh, refugees, many refugees places, but they need to go to uh, people uh, come, okay, people just come first day uh, to border and they don't have place to sleep in. And many people just live on the street because he cannot, um, just find place for sleeping. Of course, he can play, find a place for sleeping, but it, like in three days. But just like three days, people just sleep on the street because it's big line uh, to refugees places, you know. And people just don't have food. If you want to take it, uh, food for free, you need to wait maybe one day in line or three days in line, you know. Just forget food. And people just ask, give, please help us for food. And we help everyone to get people just food. Oh, all right, uh, Vladimir, um, how will you describe the support that Ukraine is getting from the West, United States and other Western allies at this point in time? And how are the, is the let me say, the military there and also civilians just like you who are waiting to be conscripted into the army, uh, really making use of the support that you get to be able to at least win the war? Vladimir. Sorry. Okay, yeah, Vladimir. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Let me take question. the question again. How much support are you getting from the, I'm talking about Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian nation getting from the West in terms of military support and other supports, maybe medical supplies and all that. We don't see, though we hear on the international, through international media. How much support are you getting and how strong are the people, especially people like you, who are waiting to be uh, conscripted to the army? Uh, how much do you think you can win the war? Well, we don't um, like uh, we don't have support. We us uh, just uh, support people from uh, uh, us account. Like Doctor Namara Jackman, she support people from her account. Nobody like support us. But of course, we won't. A support, but we just uh, try to support from us account people, you know, and she like uh, to help and support everybody and like spend a lot of her money, just spend, spend all money. And now, of course, she asks for support because now, because now more and more people come all the time from all the uh, cities, come and come and more and more. But we every day need support people. Yeah. All right, um, we'll, keep, we'll keep our fingers crossed and uh, we'll keep hope alive also too that this um, ends uh, sooner rather than uh, later. Uh, let, let's get back to you, Blessing, and, and, and this is, um, it, it's, it's, it's encouraging to see the Ukrainians uh, have to fight this and, you know, people like um, Dr. Mojeku also to uh, throw in a helping hand, in fact, more than a helping hand, their entire lives uh, in, in the front lines also to uh, try to save people going through a lot of difficult things. But, uh, this is something that must be done, right? Blessing. Um, yes. Um, the thing is that we're human first because before we become citizens of different countries. And um, 
it's for me it's uh, a honor a privilege to know someone like dr amara who has a nigerian who is doing a good work in ukraine um, trying to reach out to people she's not looking at colors she's not looking at um, where they are from but doing the best she can because she's, she knows how to speak the language which helps to uh, navigate and she has the knowledge she has the capacity and uh, that's something that's rare and um i really commend her and I, i've said to her by the time we get funds from fsn aid or from people who are willing to help we'll also be able to reach out and do the little we can even to the ukrainians because personally for me they were very good people when i stayed there they gave me uh, more than half of till i graduated apart from my first year i paid only half of my school fees so um they're very nice people accommodating pleasant um so why not ability to help them if you have the opportunity you have the chance and capacity um, be of help because you never know what um, is in stock for you tomorrow the world is a small place you never know who your children will get married to. you never know who will be of help and you never know how life will turn out and we don't know how the world's going tomorrow ukraine might be of help to nigeria one way or the other and so it's uh, for me it's something that people should emulate, something that when people have the chance to, I also say to even to the students, for those around them, I tell them, if you see anybody, be of help to them, render help, render good service. Um, it's just being human and doing the proper thing. And for me, it's my purpose in life to be of help to people and help people navigate to their next level and transform their lives and find out who they truly are. And as well as um, make them happy. So uh it's just it's not easy for me because that's what i'm accustomed to and that's what i was created for thank you so much blessing the mobile south for all the good that you do i mean it's just the best line to appreciate what you do uh, of course and in collaborations with others who are really on this project with you i uh, thank you so much blessing uh dr Marachi Mojeku, we thank you also for being part of the program amarachi is a medical doctor and internal medicine humanitarian who's based in Kiev, and also to Ukraine, Vladimir Nikolenko, thank you very much for all that you do, and the standing strong for your nation, and I'm, sure, I'm very, very sure that the whole world is rooting for you. Thank you very much, God bless you, God protect you. All right, thank you so much. We wish you the same. With regards to everyone in Ukraine, we wish you the best, okay? All right, uh, you still watch your news hub. We'll take the next break when we come back. It will be the last segment on the show. We will talk about leadership as we navigate into the year 2023. Uh, Nigerians thinking deeply like never before on the need for us to choose the best leader we've ever had since independence. But that can only be made possible by you and I when we participate actively. The next CEO is the next segment on the show to stay with us.